Aí, para lá. Aí. Aí. Deixa eu tomar aí que não te le corra, Aí. 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 Yeah. Aí. Aí. Suelta más, imagino. Y así, viste. Allá. Los primeros recuerdos que tengo en mi vida es acompañando a mi papá al mar, a pescar o a, o a bucear. Todo lo que sé en la vida me lo ha enseñado mi papá y todo lo que sé del mar y de la naturaleza, a respetarlo, a protegerlo y a cuidarlo, lo he enseñado de mi familia. Éramos 11 hermanos y, y yo el mayor, entonces mi papá me sacaba al colegio en agosto, tenía que ir a ayudarle a la temporada del, del mar. Tenía un caballo, entonces me llevaba a Lanca a mí y alojábamos en las cuevas ahí. Después lo veníamos allí, con, yo caminando y él con una mula cargada. Por parte de mi papá, por parte de mi mamá, Vienen tres, cuatro generaciones de, de familias que ha vivido cerca del océano toda su vida. Pescado y marisco, demás. Mm. Ah, Salía agotado. Ahí las corvinas. No se tape la boca, bolita, para que no... En esos años estamos obligados. Porque lo que los viejos decían, no hay que hacerlo. A sacar luces de, de bolleruca, los veníamos cargados con los sacos de luces al hombro y había que pasar esa laguna por ley, esta laguna de bolleruca. Y oscuro, con estrellas. Las corvinas eran... Oh, si ya no había cómo comer las uñas. Me acuerdo de una tremenda fogata en la playa para que se calentara la avena. Y ahí le puso hasta manzana adentro a la corvina. Y la rellenó y la envolvió y la enterró ahí. ¡Ay, qué cosa más rica! Si sí, ya no había cómo comérsela. La conexión que he tenido con el océano es de, desde muy pequeño. Yo creo que algo que ya viene en la sangre, que viene impuesto por generaciones. Yo siempre digo que mi papá me enseñó mucho de surf sin siquiera tener idea de lo que era el surf. Before Ramon was, was an internationally known surfer, 
He was in Putilemu, already working on the pulp mill campaign. During that time, the mayor of Putilemu announced that they were going to put a sewage pipeline straight into La Puntilla, which is the main surf spot right in Putilemu. And Ramon rallied everybody together and marched throughout the town. They, they coordinated a protest. They even grabbed a bunch of trash and dumped it on the mayor's doorstep and succeeding in blocking the sewage pipeline. It really did galvanize Ramon's sort of position as an environmentalist, seeing that they could actually be successful. You know, it was incredibly empowering for the Chilean surf community and the Chilean community as a whole. They had this wave in front of their house, Punta de Lobos, which was on any standard super impressive. And coming from Hawaii, I'd seen all kinds of waves, and this wave just blew my mind. Chile is what California used to be like a hundred years ago. It has incredible surf, it has incredible coastlines, it has fertile valleys and rivers, and it's developing so quickly that a lot of the surfers and a lot of the people don't really realize what's happening. On its way to Punta Lobos is just construction, 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 which, you know, isn't bad, but when you don't have a plan, when you don't think about it, all of a sudden, you've built everything out. Ramon ha tenido una visión diferente del desarrollo que puede haber principalmente aquí, en Pichilemo, y él está tratando de proteger el lugar. Punta Lobo ha sido un lugar de con la historia de vida con el mar que la gente viene de miles de años atrás donde toda la gente vivía cerca del mar aprovechándolo y respetándolo pero la historia ha ido cambiando si no hacemos algo vamos a perder esa costa It's incredible to think from where he comes, you know, and, and how many walls he had to push down. At that time, the people don't have money, they don't have almost nothing, you know. He de developed the power, you know, of the, of the Chilean fisherman. You know, Ramon coming from you know, a little fishing town, you know, learned to surf on, you know, scrap board that somebody left there. He was surfing as hard as he could. He was surfing all day long, three sessions a day, regardless of the equipment, doing his own ding repair, you know, just whatever it took to, to stay in the water and improve. A professional surfer when he was starting, you know, there was no such thing. You know, it was probably the most far-fetched, outlandish thing, you know, a kid growing up in Pichilomo could have ever dreamed. The dream may have been there, but the reality was so distant. It's about the, the um, you know, the passion, the sacrifice, the, the, the conviction. That's, that's the word. The conviction he has, you know. Ramón siempre lo empecé a notar que era así, bueno, muy bueno en el agua y muy enfocado. Siempre así sabía lo que quería. Quería salir de Pichilemu y conocer el mundo más allá. Él es un cazador. Su padre y él son cazadores, son buzos, cazadores de pescado. Y él tiene un objetivo y él va y busca su objetivo y lo consigue. Eso mismo lo ha llevado al ser.
Ramon have never fly, you know. I don't know that. But when I arrived to the airport, he told me, man, it's my first time and I saw that this fear face, you know. La primera vez que salí de Chile fue bien radical porque era un mundo bien diferente. Ramon, Diego, and their friend Vaca, boogie boarders, show up to my house with $100 between the three of them and no surfboards. I had enough money to kind of float them for you know, a few days, but obviously $100 is only going to get you so far on the North Shore. No teníamos plata. No teníamos, entre los dos no teníamos más de 300 ni 200 dólares. So I tried to develop a system where they can earn a little money. He knows how to make food. So I thought it would be a cool idea to build a mud oven and make empanadas, which are a Chilean treat, um, kind of like a meat pie, and sell them to, you know, the North Shore. Meantime, these guys are going around Pupukea, shooting chickens with slingshots and cooking them, making chicken stew. <laughs> Did they ever put wild chickens in the empanadas? Probably. And I remember seeing Ramon at Ehukai Park selling empanadas. And uh, I was like, wow, this guy probably needs some money. Turns out they weren't super popular because they were covered in mud, walking around with a red cooler, trying to sell these things on the beach. And, you know, looking back on it, I probably wouldn't have bought one from them either. The night that they got there, I picked them up. The surf was pumping. I could see fear in their eyes. Like, these kids just got off the plane. Like, okay, well, I got a board for you, Ramon. We're going out to Waimea in the morning. Yo siguiendo alcohol y con miedo, sí, con harto miedo, nervioso. No lo esperaba, nunca me había metido en Guaymea, nunca había usado una tabla de nueve pies ni nada. Col siempre nos decía, oye, si está grande, la única manera que ganéis respeto es que tenéis que meterte. I could definitely tell the first couple times I saw Ramon that Cole must have dragged him out because Ramon was kind of pretty far out on the shoulder and he was tripping, you know? Well, the first time I met Ramon was surfing out at Himalayas and Cole brought him out there. And basically anybody who can punch through all those lineups just to get out to that outside reef deserves to be out there. Ramon would probably credit, you know, Cole with showing them how to, you know, ride big waves, you know, basically saying, you, know, you guys can go way bigger, way deeper, and this is how you do it. mierda me hizo meterme a olas gigantes, cagarme de susto muchas veces. Pero se lo agradezco hasta el día de hoy. They brought him out for his first time to Waimea. And 10 years later, we were surfing in the Eddie I cow together. <laughs> Being invited to the Eddie is validation on the highest level as far as a, a big wave surfer and, and waterman to be invited to that event. You know that people that really know their stuff and your peer group 
recognize you as one of the best big wave surfers in the world. Any I call it. Surf, live, swam, loved you. He had respect. He knew the tides, he knew the energy. He knew that any one of the waves here without respect to you. Y no lo podía creer. Estaba viendo a todo mi héroe, a todos los leyendas del surf mundial juntos sentados en el círculo y yo era uno de ellos. De sueños de toda una vida. As a as a big wave rider, you know, like Waimea is 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 one of like the premium big waves in the world, and it's by far the the, the most inconsistent, it's by far the most elusive big wave in the world. It breaks all the time, but it never breaks huge. Very rarely, maybe once every five years. If you want your chance at a wave that's gonna change your life kind of wave at Waimea, even if you want it super bad, you may not ever get the chance. That day was just incredible. It was crazy because after lunch, it just started like picking up speed and just getting much bigger. The swell just kept building and building and building all afternoon. I want to say Sonny was in that heat, Greg Long, and um, that was the, really the heat of the event because there were so many big waves came in during that, that heat, that one hour. And we stood on the beach for 45 minutes waiting for a gap in the waves just to get out of the shore break. That last heat that Ramon was in, in the eddy, was by far one of the most pumping heats of any eddy ever. Llegamos al canal a punto de saltar y empezó a crecer el mar, pero de un minuto a otro. No paró, no paró, no paró. It was just like literally, like someone flipped the switch. Giant wave after giant wave after giant wave. For some reason, we're in that last heat and it pumped. I mean, it was big. Yo me acuerdo que agarré dos buenas. La tercera fue muy grande, pero me caí en el drop, fue como un air drop. Y después dice, me quedo solo una ola. Me fui a sentar al fondo atrás. I remember that one set that came in, it was so big. It was the kind of set that most people just paddle right over. And I remember the whole crowd just like on the beach for like 30 seconds or a minute beforehand. Everyone was just like, wow! You could see that, you could feel the, everyone's energy because you could see that wave like a mile out. I mean, I remember kicking out of a wave going, Ooh. Boy, here comes the closeout. It was going across the bay. It stood up all the way across the bay. So, you know, I was just thinking, trying to get over the wave. You know, meanwhile, screaming the whole time. I just turned around and I remember seeing the horizon stretching all the way across outside the alligators, you know, around the corner, just black. Y yo me acordaba de lo que Dusty siempre me ha dicho que mantén tu cabeza abajo, mira que estés bien alineado y cuando venga la ola ya cuando esté encima date vuelta y dale. He got to the bottom and blasted all around and he came out and the whole crowd just went crazy. It was literally like he won the Super Bowl or something. As everything subsides, I see this little guy riding it all the way in, straighten out, dive on his belly. You know, like the classic, you know, days of Pat Kerr and Greg Knoll and just hold on for dear life through the damn shore break of this thing. I got goosebumps all up my back right now. It was, it was crazy to watch that in person. That was the biggest wave caught during the event. Ridden perfectly, covered up in the white water, full drama, pops out, rode it all the way through the shore break. That's one of the best waves ever in any eddy. And that was one of the, the, the greatest big waves of all time, for sure, ever ridden. Lo único que escuchaba era toda la gente gritando. 
¡Wow! El estadio gigante gritando. Y... Fue muy loco. Estaba la paloma ahí con su bata gigante, con Inti a punto de nacer. Estaba mucha ganas de llorar porque sabéis todo lo que había pasado para llegar a ser alguien en Hawái y que pase todo en una hora era. You know, he's not a super well-known guy in the, in the surf world at that point. And all of a sudden, like, you could tell, like, within five seconds, he, everyone knew who Ramon was. It only takes one wave to change your life. All of a sudden, now he was a world, global surf star. Big wave legend. I mean, he got a wave that none of us have gotten out there. And for Ramon to go from where he was, selling empanadas with no money, building mud ovens for people on the North Shore and and just kind of scrubbing by and doing what he loves to being the first person to represent Chile in the Eddy. That was like the Cinderella story of all Cinderella stories. It's great that somebody like him, who's come from humble beginnings, working class, has been able to travel around the world and probably get a better perspective than most of the politicians in Chile. Jamás me imaginé que en Pichilemo iba a haber alguien como Ramón, que de ser hijo de pescadores aquí, es un embajador chileno. Si Ramón lleva adelante una protección al, al, a, a la costa, a, a las olas, a proteger el medio ambiente puede, puede tener mucha ayuda es una autoridad de la hora and is utilizing what he has and what he has is a voice and he has followers and he has people that will look up to him el ser me está dando una oportunidad de, de poder hablar y expresar la realidad de mi país y esa voz yo creo que tengo que aprovecharla With Ramon as as really sort of the vehicle, you know, he's the one who's who's motivating all these different people, entities to kind of rally around this cause, to basically form a land trust and and save Punta Lobos. He really wants to get this right because he knows that it can be a model for the rest of Chile to preserve the really unique coastline that they have. You know, he's the guy that's gonna that's gonna roll up his sleeves and make it happen. He's the unifier and he's the we're gonna get this done. Puede lograr mucho porque ha sido una de las personas que en Chile está siendo escuchada. Muchos chilenos que están mirando a Ramón. Tenemos un país increíble que es para todos y tenemos que cuidarlo. Con una persona uno no va a salvar algo. Tienen que ser todos juntos. Hay una revolución. Puede ser escuchada. 
Yeah, right. 